So the question was asked, when did these chiasms, and I ended up uh, ending the meeting, so I, I, I had to uh, start it again. So the question is asked, these chiasms in Samuel Snow's letters, which date was it discovered? And, and I can actually find that out really quickly, because if you go to the School of the Prophet web, I should actually remember this date. I should memorize it. Um, so if you go to the School of the Prophets uh, website and you go to their videos and you go way back to 2018, this was, well, there's a lot of videos. Um, I believe it was, it was an evening study and it would have been the afternoon. I believe it's, um, it would have been uh, October 25th, 2018. I believe that's the one that that's presented in, or it could have been, yeah, October 25th. I did two different presentations that day. So it's one of those presentations. Uh, it's probably the second one. Um, yeah, anyway, welcome back everyone. <laughs> so when we look at this structure, how, how do people see this? The fact that we had Samuel Snow's letters in 2017 I would think is extremely significant. So we know that Parminder was teaching error regarding time setting, but we had understood things that were completely independent of anything Parminder was teaching. That is, uh, if you go back to 2013, in this message, we came to understand uh, the structure of the prophetic uh, periods, the 22520s, the, that these were connected with the Babylonian captivity in the four seven times. So in 2013 was the first time we understood the four seven times. We also came to understand from 2013 to 2014, the first day of the fifth month. And if we're going to look at this, that these dates that were given us, the Parminder has nothing to do with these dates. The first day of the fifth month, and finally the fifth day of the fourth month. So, so the question is, if we got off the path, when did we depart from that path? How far back would we have to go? Because we know Parminder brought in time setting in 2012, but it was rejected. And so he wasn't even really a part of what was happening in 2013. And in 2014, in 2014, uh, we we had the 391 and a half years and the prophecy of Ezekiel, the 391 and a half years of Ezekiel was understood in 2014. In 2015, we came to understand Josiah Litch's prophecy. Now, when I say we, most people in the movement weren't aware of what was being presented in Canada, some of this was being presented in Arkansas. So I did present in 2014 in Arkansas, but it wasn't generally accepted. I was just some other guy presenting stuff. Jeff was accepting it and he was presenting parts of it that he understood, but it wasn't something that the movement rejected. So in 2016, while Heidi and I were at the School of the Prophets, we came to understand the connection of Ezekiel with Josiah Litch's prophecy. Again, Parminder has no part in any of this. So the question is, all of this information and this light that was being given to us, which we need to examine, the question is, is this light, I just have to adjust something here. Is this light that was being accepted by this movement not necessarily by, by everyone in this movement, but was this light that was being accepted by this movement, was it light or was it error? 
So that's one of the things that we have to ask ourselves. And we need to go back and examine it. It was understanding regarding Ezra. So in 2017, it was the study of the chronology of Ezra, uh, chapter 7 to 10, that connected. So I was doing this independent study on Ezra, and then the study of the prediction before midnight came up. And so I found that these two fit together like a glove. That is, the structural chiasms in 457 BC were tied to the structural chiasms in 1844, and especially the chiasm that went from February 16th, 1844, to July 18th, 1844, that had May 2nd in the center. Now, of course, we can see that this July 18th here is symbolic in that it's not literally 391.5 days between Samuel Snow's third letter and the publishment of his fourth letter, but it can be represented. And it unveiled this chiasm in his letters when we found this July 18th date. So what ended up happening is all of these different pieces of the puzzle began to fall into place. But I knew that there was a problem. So the problem was really quite simple. We can't set dates for the events that we were trying to set dates for. And all of the, um, all, of the, all of the dates that we had and the events that we were predicting, none of them were coming to pass. But it became quite clear that uh, these were not happening in the way that we expected them to happen. Now, we did a series of studies on the disappointments of the Millerites. And we showed that the Millerites kept predicting dates. And things did not occur as they expected, all the way up to October 22nd, 1844. Now, many Millerites continued to set dates even after October 22nd, 1844. And of course, Ellen White says that after October 22nd, 1844, time is never going to be a test. And, and that's a valid statement of Ellen White's. So one of the things that I took the position of in discussing this with different people on social media is I took the position that we can't have November 9th and also subsequently July 18th as a test. That the test has to be something else. And we can see that the failure of the false priests was not over whether they, because we both were predicting November 9th, it wasn't over whether November 9th was valid or not. What they had taught was a bunch of different things uh, regarding uh, dress, how women are to dress and LGBTQ rights and, and all these other things, false ideas about the American constitution, et cetera. So, so the division that happened in the movement happened over theology um, and it was not about time setting at all. Now it is true at least my belief is that it's true, is that chronology was given us by God as a witness for this message to validate it. And what we expected then is that July 18th would occur and that this would empower the message in some way, that people would see that we made a prediction and that our methods of studying the Bible were correct. Now, when that failed, um, Many of us were disappointed to the point that some people attacked the message, uh, said they never believed it, they never understood it. But also, uh, you know, many people in the movement tried to figure out what this meant. Some people kept setting dates, you know, July 31st or different things like that. There was a number of different interpretations. But what we see now is that we have two different views arising in the movement, and we have to decide whether which of these two views is correct. The one view is that time setting was completely a mistake and any of the light in connection with time setting should be solidly, solidly rejected. That is, we would have to argue that we made a mistake and that we were under a deception. Now, we know that Parminder, we already rejected Parminder's arguments and everything that he was teaching. So the question is, where is the deception? Is it just something that we had to learn by a mistake uh, further? Now, part of the problem is that 
the time elements weren't totally accepted by Parminder, especially all the, all the work that I had done was rejected by Parminder and Tess, but it also stood as a witness against them. So if it wasn't for the structure of the prophetic chronology, when we got to September 7th, I would have sided with Parminder. And, and, and some people may say, well, that's pretty crazy. Why would you do that? Well, because a lot of us were following Parminder and were accepting what he was saying. Now, I understood what he was saying. I understood it very, very clearly, much more than many people who, who either rejected it or even people who accepted it, because as I said, it was what I grew up with. And my dad had died um, in December of 2018. And the question that I had is Parminder started to unfold this, this light that they supposedly had. I was willing to reject pretty much everything, at least intellectually, I was, I was considering it, saying maybe my dad was right. And I tried to reason it out. And it took me a lot to sort of um, sort through. So when I got to August 29th, 2019, and we saw what was happening in Germany, definitely I knew that there was a problem, but I didn't know the answer to it because I believed like all of us that this movement was being led by God. And it was, it was something that was a very difficult struggle in, in my own mind of how to address this. Cause I knew what it meant. I knew ultimately, if you take Parminder's logic, you become an evolutionist. You would recognize that if, if it's true that Ellen White just wrote in her culture, then the old Testament writers just wrote what they knew. Um, and, and you would have to reject pretty much anything that would be considered um, fundamentalist Christian. The idea of understanding of the scriptures, the ideas of inspiration, all these things would be completely changed. So I knew that, but I grew up with that. And, and so I was thinking it would be very odd that God would lead me around through all of this to just come back to the starting point. But that was the logic that I knew I had to accept if Parminder was correct. But prior to August 29th, I had prayed to God, um, God, I need to know what is true. The stuff that's happening in this movement is beyond my ability to understand as a human being. I can't understand what's being taught. I know where it's leading because we had a camp meeting in, in uh, June of 2019 here in Alberta. And the idea that there was gonna be a Sunday law was presented and I accepted uh, that based on a bit different arguments, but some of the same arguments that were being used by Tess. And so I was struggling with this whole issue, just like many of you were, but I'd left it in God's hands. And one of the things I knew is I had set aside July 18th, you know, at least as far as promoting it in a, in a large way, obviously with my friends, I was still studying it and trying to understand it. But when we got to, uh, this, this camp meeting in Germany, and I was watching these videos and struggling with it. And I knew what was happening also in Germany with Stephen and Odilio, because Stephen and Odilio had been in contact with me about the July 18th prediction. And they were the ones really doing most of the work on it at that time. And uh, they believed that this was extremely important and that Parminder should accept it. And Stephen really felt that Parminder was going to accept the July 18th prediction. And, and I was under that, that illusion as well. I thought that maybe Parminder secretly believed it, but he was just waiting for a time to do it. But as we started to go through that camp meeting and Stephen and Odilio were being uh, censured and, and you know disfellowshipped or whatever, if they were going to accept my teaching on July 18th, even before we got there, I had already left it in God's hands. I said, God, if it's true, then this movement will accept it. And if it's not true, that's fine. So I had surrendered July 18th to God. And to my surprise, when Jeff got up on the 6th of, or the 7th of September and, and, and presented his message and I did the calculation, and I realized that the structure was sound and, and a whole bunch of light came from that structure. 
then I had to accept that God was still leading in this movement and that July 18th was of God and that Parminder and his movement was false. And of course, once, once I saw that, God unraveled all the deception uh, that part, and it took a few days. It didn't just happen in a moment. It took a few days for me to fully reject Parminder. If you read the paper that I wrote called um, um, a September 7th, there's a paper on that. I wrote it on September 7th, so I wrote it that evening. And, and I'm definitely accepting some of the ideas still of Parminder. So it's, it's not really a pure document. There's some things in there, some wrong ideas that I had. But you can see that I'm recognizing uh, that this separation is happening. You can see the struggle in that paper. So it's not actually until I think Monday that I finally um, accept Monday evening that I kind of accept that Parminder and his movement is the false movement. It took, took a while, uh, maybe it doesn't seem that long, two days, but based on what was happening, um, you know, I probably should have known it sooner, but like many of you, I was, I was deceived. And, and Parminder had lied to me and Heidi personally about many things that he was teaching. And that was one of the problems is, uh, I, I didn't know that he was lying. I believed him. I trusted him. But once we saw what was happening, we knew that he had actually lied to us. We could see that he was just deceiving us. So that was the other thing. And of course, he admitted to lying, admitting, admitted to being deceitful. So here we have this, um, this structure. So I'm going to address the structure here. So I think what I'll do is Friday, next Friday, we'll actually go through um, Heather's uh, article, because we're not going to have time to do it today and to do it justice. But what I what I think that we should do uh, before I just go and finish this up, and I just want to state this, we need to be very careful about um, the type of spirit that we manifest. The thing that I like about Noel's paper and Heather's paper is that they have a good spirit and they're, they're great and wonderful people. They're not, they're not trying to attack anyone or hurt anyone. They're not lashing out. And, and I agree with most of what they're saying. I just think that there is a series of arguments that we have to address. So, and this is what we really need to address. So I'm going to, uh, um, just for the recording, I have to switch this and go back. <clears throat> so he talks in there about the midnight chiasm. Now we've done this midnight chiasm many, many times, but not everybody is as familiar with the significance of it all. And, and the simple way that we look at it is we look at two parts to it. We have November 9th over here. And we have June 9th here. And we have uh, October 13th. So these are all 2018 here. And the center of this is this August 11th date. Nothing happens on that date, but it's the structure of 63 and 63. And of course, this structure is Samuel Snow's letters. And that is extremely significant that we can have this structure that connects this November 9th from Samuel Snow's letters. Because we already understood them to be light, a thing we call the prediction before midnight. Now, when Jeff got up on September 7th, I noticed that it was 63 days to November 9th. But I also understood that it, what was even, I guess, more important to me is that this was the center of this was March 27th, 2019. So this date here ended up being in, in the center of this structure, which was 164.5 days on either side. And this is noon and this is noon. 
And this is the beginning of March 27th. And this ended up being um, uh, 329 days. But it was more the center of this chiasm that was significant to me because this was a symbol of the Levites, 273. And uh, we know that we had all these symbols, the 26th day of the fourth month, which is 264, the 10th day of the fifth month. We had this 391.5 symbol, and we had this 273 symbol of the Levites. And we spent a lot of time going through Acts 27 and understanding how Acts 27 represents this movement. So, so there was all these different things that were being understood. Now, Jeff provided this 63 days. And initially, when he had this date of January 11th, he wasn't connecting it with the midnight chiasm. That is, he wasn't, he wasn't counting it's 63 days, and so it's part of the structure. He had already recognized January 11th, 2020. And then he recognized that there was this structure and this structure. So he completed this structure that I had already seen. He completed it. But then he also tied it together with 63 weeks to uh, March 27th, 2021. Now, March 27th, 2021 was already a date that we had, right? We had that in the 777 structure where you have November 9th, you have uh, July 18th, so 2019, 2020, and then you have March 27th, 2021, and then you have December 25th, 2021, a period of 777 days, which was Stephen's uh, find, which he had actually used initially in understanding November 9th. Um, but the point is this 252 and this 252 and then this 273 was already a part of our structure. So this 63 weeks that we had here, which is 441 days, um, that Jeff had found was significant, right? So he found that this structure fit into the other structure that we already had. Now this structure is actually a bigger structure of the 777 chiasm that fits into these other structures. But the point is, when, when Jeff wrote these dates down, he wrote them like this, 9-7, 11-9, and 1-11. And that's the American way of writing dates, you write month and day. Um, right, so January 11th, where the Canadian and European way is to write them this way, 7-9, 9-11 and 11-1. Now, what I think it was Odilio who noticed this, but he noticed that if you added these numbers up, 97 plus uh, 119 and 111, they added up to uh, 327. And 327 is the way that you would write March 27th in the American way of writing a date. And then I noticed that if you took this way of writing them and you added them up, you would get this number. Um, it would be, uh, see, I think I did, yeah, this one. So I, have to, I always do this backwards. Um, yeah, so it would be the 11th day and the first month. It would add up to 1,101 which would represent this date. So writing it one way gives you this end date, writing it another way gives you this date. Now, we have a number of things happening here. We have Samuel Snow's letters. We have this symbol of March 27th, and this gave us this, this Levitical chiasm. So the Levitical chiasm had March 27th in the center of it. 
and that would be 2020. And that is the date that the 100 days of prayer begin that are going to end on July 4th. And this 100 days of prayer, if we, um, there's a whole bunch of things involved in this. I'm not going to go into the whole thing. But basically, we know this is 144,000 minutes. And there's much more in this structure that we could address. The point is, uh, we ended up with this whole structure. But this structure was something that was built on something that was solid. That is, all of these arguments, all these things that we go back to, were things that we came to understand by studying the Bible. Uh, the chiasms in the story of Jacob and Joseph. Uh, we had the the prophecy of Ezekiel. We had the 2520 and the fulfillment of the four seven times. We had, um, you know, Ezra 7 to 10, the structure there, Samuel Snow's letters, uh, Millerite history. Over and over again, everything that we had come to understand as light came together in this July 18th prediction. So the question is, is this some kind of deception? Or is this something that God led us in doing in spite of the fact we're not supposed to time set and we went against God's counsel? Now, there's another argument. That that we could look at. That Jeff used regarding July 18th, and he used the story of Abraham offering up Isaac. And we know in that case, if we were going to take that case, we recognize that God stays Abraham's hand and he doesn't kill his son. And if we had thought about applying that application, we would recognize that the event, it was another sign that the event would not occur. So I know this has been a little bit, a lot of information from anybody who's not really familiar with it. Uh, but we do have other videos that you can go back and watch. The point is that when I look at Noel's arguments, he is correct regarding the errors and the logic that Parminder used in predict predicting November 9th. But that the, what we used in supporting November 9th and ultimately leading us to July 18th, Parminder and Test did not accept. So... The question, and it also stands as a witness against them. So the question was that led by God or not? So any thoughts on this? I know I've been talking a lot. Any thoughts about this? Many of you are familiar with this already, the people here that are uh, live, but people watching it uh, on video, many of them may not be familiar with it. So is there something that, you know, maybe should be made more clear or some question that people have? Uh, something that so needs it to be answered. Is that, um, it, it looks like we have three different 391.5s. Yeah. In our line. So that gives it three legs to stand on. So then um, we can't just say that since June, um, can't just eliminate June 9th because that's where we started and say all the structure is wrong because it's come up three different times yeah and and also so so you're looking at the structure of just what happened but also none of this structure was anything that parminder ultimately accepted i mean he liked it right after um you know on october 13th he liked it for that week uh, but by the end of the week by the time the camp meeting was over um at some point he actually rejected all of these arguments so he rejected October 13th as the midnight cry. He rejected the whole structure. And people within the movement started to attack the 391.5, even though Jeff was teaching it. Um, and, and it happened while we were there in Arkansas in 2018. We saw that there was a work to undermine um, everything that was being taught regarding the 391.5 and also July 18th. So by the time when we were there, it was accepted in November by Jeff, but by basically by the end of November, uh, it had already been pretty much rejected by the movement 
and it took Jeff a little while. He, he still kind of used it here and there, uh, but ultimately it took him a long time because he saw the evidences. He was so convinced, especially the connection with Samuel Snow's letters. So if we we're gonna look at this, uh, you know, honestly, if we're gonna look at, the, at what happened, I think we actually have to address all of the arguments that were used in July 18th, because we all agree that Parminder's arguments were faulty, but it doesn't mean that God then uh, was misleading us or allowing us to be misled even after we rejected Parminder's arguments. So, so I think it's something that has to be addressed. Now, in Heather's letter, which we're going to study next Friday, um, there's some very powerful statements in the spirit of prophecy regarding apostasy, regarding acknowledging our sins, and, and, and accepting God's correction. And I think that that's something that has to be recognized in this movement. We need to know where we went off the path in, in some areas. But the question is, do we je then reject um, all of the time setting? And, and if we do, on what basis? Like, how do we explain all of these structures? And, and who was in control of that? So that, that has to be one of the questions that is, that's asked. So uh, any other thoughts? Yeah, I don't see Dwight. Dwight didn't end up coming back on. I'm not sure why. I, I know I lost a few people when I disconnected the, the meeting there. Any other thoughts on this of uh, questions or you just need time to think about it for, for next week? What I recommend people do is yeah. read. What's that? Patrick? Um, I really have not been able to keep up with your subsequent meetings. Past, okay. well, I don't know, I guess September 5th or have, have, um, has your structures expanded beyond like the, what we have on the screen now uh, in your last 25 meetings and so are you getting any more light or clearer light on the structures since well what what we've been doing is we've been going through ezekiel so since our message was founded on ezekiel when ezekiel typifies snow we felt that it's important to understand ezekiel and and that's going very slowly but it's very necessary because there's so much light in ezekiel um, what I have found is uh, an explanation for the structure of our lines and how they match Millerite history. So I'm going to be presenting that next Sabbath um, at the Three Angels Messages Fellowship uh, for the Sabbath sermon. Um, I've already presented it uh, a little bit in some of the Ezekiel studies last week, um, on Thursday last week, and then also on um, the Friday night prayer meeting last week. Um, so, so we have our, our, our Friday night study. So we've already looked at it a little bit, uh, but I really have want to want to present it as simply as I can to see that this movement, what we experienced, was the prediction before midnight, and it was Samuel Snow's letters, and as such, we should not have a expected any of the events we predicted to have occurred but it doesn't mean that God was misleading us he was leading us we weren't under a deception but we were experiencing something like Ezekiel as an acted out parable and so our movement has become a, a parable or a type so we are a type this is a typical line and the line of the priests um, needs to be understood in connection with, with Millerite history. And that was something that we never had before. And now we have an explanation for it. So, so yeah, there's a lot of things that are connected. I don't think that people necessarily need to watch all of the Ezekiel studies. It's quite detailed. It's, you know, we're on study number 40, we just did yesterday. And that's a lot of information. I mean, people are watching them. There's about a hundred people or more that or 100 different views that they get as people are trying to catch up. 
uh, but people are getting further and further behind. It's a lot of lot of information, and they're very slow studies, but um, it's necessary. But I think where we are right now in this movement is we we have to study individually and and try to understand these things, uh, but we also need to treat each other with respect, even when people aren't fully um, understanding things the way that we are, uh, because we could be wrong. So the question that we have to ha have to ask is right now, uh, we don't have leadership as such with, uh, with Jeff stepping down uh, at, at this point, whether he's gonna come back and start to say anything about it, I don't know. But right now we're left to study these on our own and to study together in a Christ-like way um, and not to be attacking one another because we are a movement and, and right now people have been talking about the upper room experience and I think that that's something that we need to experience. It's very difficult with all the distance that we have and not everybody's um, you know watching everybody else's videos. There isn't a lot of videos being put out. We have some from the School of the Prophets and then we have uh, Three Angels Messages Fellowship and then the videos that I've been putting out and I don't know about anybody else really putting out videos to try to explain what has happened. And as many people know, it's not something that I'm comfortable with being in this position. I even took a week off to really evaluate it, but people felt it was needful to continue studying. And so that's what we're doing. Uh, you know, if Jeff was doing morning meetings, I wouldn't be presenting in the morning. I wouldn't, I'm not in competition uh, with, with anybody. This is something that we're just trying to do to understand things. So, you know, this is where we'll leave it for today. Uh, I want people to read over Noel's paper again. And, and if people have suggestions of things that I'm missing, I'd be happy to hear those things. And then next Friday, we'll look at, at Heather's paper because uh, I think it's, it's extremely good. I just don't agree with her conclusion Basically, the last paragraph is the only one that I would probably say I don't agree with, because um, I don't think it actually follows from the statements that she she presents of spirit of prophecy. I don't think it follows. It's a leap to 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 say that this time setting is all basically a delusion. And she didn't quite say it that way, but that's that's the implication. So, any final thoughts? So we're going to close with prayer. And uh, I thank everybody for participating. It's too bad we lost the light, uh, but maybe he also had other things to do as well. Maybe he can come back on, or maybe he doesn't know what happened. But uh, let's close with prayer. Dear Father in heaven, we are thankful for the time that we've had here. We know that Noel and Heather and others um, who are questioning, uh, the direction that this movement has taken. Um, some people maybe have different spirits about it. There's maybe anger or hurt. We know that uh, there's people also asking sincere questions and that they're willing to hear uh, the answers that could be given. I know, Lord, that uh, you have led us in our lives individually, and we can see how you have led your church and yet we can also see that many people have fallen away. And we need to know, Lord, uh, where we stand. Help us to cling to Christ, to what he has done for us, to recognize that the cross is the center of all these chiasms, um, that it, the purpose of all of these things is for Christ's character to be formed in us and for us to, to experience the joy of salvation. Be with each person be with the struggles that we have with these things and be with us in the other ways that we struggle. We know many people are still hurting and we ask, Lord, that you can use us to minister to them. Thank you for hearing our prayer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.